And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show! Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who likes to throw eggs on Halloween. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And that's right, I did say throwing eggs on Halloween, and I know what it means. From both ends, and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But boy, oh boy, is it beautiful here in early fall... On Milleronia, I must tell you that, yes, yes, I control the weather and I control the time and I control people's moods. No, not a, not that. Well, I'll, I'll learn that. I'll learn. I'll learn to do that too. But it's just gorgeous here, and uh, boy, what a nice time to come around. School has started, and uh, of course, we we have some of the best things in the world here, and I'm very happy doing our show and uh, everyone's back to health here and you know what it uh, it just makes me feel good and the colonel feels the same way and of course the music makes me so happy that's the Ned Beatty Orchestra and the Rona Mitra Dancers featuring boy tenor Nick Duvetter asking the musical question what if the hokey pokey really is what it's all about wow well, both the Colonel, Colonel Jeff and I thought, pretty good question, Nick. Really interesting and fun and witty, too. But, you know, maybe, uh, well, first of all, maybe I'm just in a good mood because I love doing my show and I love being on Milleronia. And I think we could all use more simplicity in our lives. But I'll tell you what, a good start for all that may just be doing the hokey pokey and realizing that is what it's all about. You know what? I'm fine with that. And I was asking the colonel because I don't, it, it dawned on me, I don't even know what the hokey pokey is. I, I did it, I guess, in, in kindergarten or third grade or something. And maybe every year, I, I suppose, in those years. And, uh, and Colonel Jeff remembered doing it at a skating rink with his class and they were he thinks wearing roller skates and that was a pretty big operation in in his area when he was growing up and i don't know what it's about and he doesn't know what it's what it's what it is i know the i know the poem i know the little tune you you stick your left foot in you stick your left foot out you stick your left foot in and you shake it all about you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Hey, I think that's it, including the hey. But you know what? I remember vaguely smiling and giggling and laughing when we would do that. But, you know, well, we were five and that's nothing wrong with that. But uh, Nick, good question. What if the hokey pokey really is what it's all about? You know what, pal? I'm fine with that. And uh, I'll tell you more about uh, the great Ned Beatty and the great Rona Mitra later. That'll come up. You'll see. And by PayPal. That's right, PayPal. Boy, a great company. And I always love saying, if you enjoy my show, and why wouldn't you? And you'd like to send a few bucks here. To help out, and why wouldn't you? You can do it all through PayPal. Boy, folks, I'll tell you what. And uh, what a group they are. You know that uh, if you if you donate and you work with PayPal, sometimes you feel like you're saving the world, and who knows, maybe you are. Instead of saying donate, by the way, or pay what you like, or join the Platinum Committee, I always like to say buy us some drinks. That's, that's a good way to do because there are different levels. Level one through five, all the way up to... We're driving to Florida! <laughs> you know what, by the way, I think maybe that audience just did the hokey pokey. And they turned themselves around, and that's what it's all about. 
But I'll tell you what, folks, uh, PayPal, you know what? Look for the PayPal banner on our website because, oh, it's, you, know, you can go the, anyway. There are a thousand ways to get to PayPal on your, your computer, your laptop, your iPhone, whatever you want to do. But you know what? Go to our website, LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. <laughs> Boy, that was a great hit, and it's nice to hear that cheer with, uh, with the World Series coming up, of course. And uh, that extra cheer in the middle, though, I think, maybe they just hanged someone also. Because they, they, sometimes at a ball game, you, you know, it's even when someone hits a nice hit, you, hey, you just, hey, look at that over there in the, in the bleachers, they hung someone. Hanged someone, actually. Did you know that? You, the, 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 uh, the past tense is hanged for hanging, not hung. He was hung. No, you, you don't do that. That's not the way it's said. I don't know why that's important to put out, put it out there, but I did. And uh, you know what, though? Go to PayPal. Every little bit helps us keep the old leg lamp lit. And uh, thank you to everyone who contributed already. It means a lot. And thank you to those of you who are just saying, you know what? I think I'll put my left foot in and shake it all about and... Uh, and send some too. Thank you very much, folks. And uh, that brings me to my favorite part of the show, the joke of the week. I love this. I love passing on a good joke, and I hope you do too. There's nothing better than a good laugh and uh, in a good way and uh, to your friends and loved ones and family. And uh, I think this one... <laughs> I think this one qualifies. So does Colonel Jeff. Uh, there's a very old Jewish man, and he's in bed at home, and he's dying. And it's the end for him, and he's there, and he's getting weaker and weaker. And and he, he calls his w wife in the next room and says, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. And she comes in and you say, yes, Ben, yes, sweetheart. And he says, I I just wanted to say it. I've been thinking it just I just realized that when the store burned down here when our store burned that uh, well you, you you were with me and and she said yes yes of course and he said uh, and well when the Nazis threw us out in from Germany and you were there then you were with me and she said yes 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 and and uh, he said to her and now that I am on my deathbed you're beside me again? Yes, Ben, yes, darling. And he said, It's finally dawned on me. You're a jinx. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good... There are many different kinds of jokes, and I love them all, but that's a good silly joke. And <laughs> that you really knew, well, that you need that bass drum with the timpani going in. Boom! After that. But... Uh, <laughs> that's right <laughs> and uh, again please pass that along and keep it going that's a pretty good joke that's one that should be there far more than we are and that brings me to my second favorite part of the show the poetry corner Beautiful music from that great string quartet that I like so much. And this is by the wonderful Edgar Allan Poe. And it's called The City of Sin. Lo, death hath reared himself a throne in a strange city all alone, far down within the dim west, where the good and the bad and the worst and the best have gone to their eternal rest. Their shrines and palaces and towers are not like anything of ours. Oh, no! Oh, no! Ours never loom to heaven with that ungodly gloom. 
time-eaten towers that tremble not, resemble nothing that is ours, around by lifting winds forgot, resignedly beneath the sky the melancholy waters lie. No holy rays from heaven come down on the long night-time of that town, but light from out the lurid sea streams up the turrets silently, up thrones, up long forgotten bowers of sculptured ivy and stone flowers, up domes, up spires, up kingly halls, up fanes, up Babylon like walls, up many a melancholy shrine whose entablatures intertwine the mask, the viol, and the vine. There open temples, open graves, are on a level with the waves, but not the riches there that lie in each idol's diamond eye. Not the gaily jeweled dead tempt the waters from their bed, for no ripples curl, alas, along that wilderness of glass. No swellings hint that winds may be upon a far-off happier sea. So blend the turrets and shadows there that all seem pendulous in air, while from the high towers of the town death looks gigantically down. But lo, a stir is in the air, the wave there is a ripple there, as if the towers had thrown aside, in slightly sinking the dull tide, as if the turret-tops had given a vacuum in the filmy heaven. The waves have now a redder glow, the very hours are breathing low, and when, amid no earthly moans, down, down that town shall settle hence, all Hades from a thousand thrones shall do it reverence, and death to some more happy clime shall give his undivided time. Well, that's pretty good. Edgar Allan Poe, hmm. The City of Sin. There is, just as there's nothing like a good joke, there's nothing like a good poem. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. The Magic Movie Moment. And this is a good one. In fact, I saw it just two days ago again on a TV, on a cable station that plays movies. Well, I... I I'm always flipping around. I don't know about you, but I love great movies and even very, very good movies. And I think, uh, look, I've been in a few of them too. I, I'm very proud of that. This one is terrific. From 2007, Shooter, directed by Antoine Fuqua, starring, boy, what a cast they had. Mark Wahlberg, Michael Pena, Ned Beatty, Danny Glover, Kate Mara, Rona Mitra, Elias Cotea, oh, it, and so many more. This is a terrific movie and very well made. And it's, well, it's about a veteran sniper, a veteran shooter, who's just more brilliant than anyone else at it. And uh, he had his last mission went terribly wrong, and he said, that's it. And he, he dropped out, and he vanished. And he's, well, he's living now on his own with his dog in the hills of, you never know even where, West Virginia or Tennessee, something like that. And uh, a group of fellas, a group of men from a group, they say they work for the government, but uh, they want to hire him and get his advice on something. And they go out there and they find him. And... Uh, well, things start to go right, and then they start to go wrong. It's a very good movie in every way. And uh, some of the actors there, 
Rona Mitra, by the way, is just a favorite of mine. She's a wonderful actress. And we've worked together in the movie, uh, or rather the t- television series, Boston Legal. And uh, she's terrific. She's a wonderful actress. And she's just a lot of fun to be with. The whole cast is terrific. And the magic movie moment in this, for me, there are many. But there's a big shootout in the icy, snow-covered mountains. Danny Glover plays a character named Colonel Johnson, says to Mark Wahlberg over the phone, you know, uh, listen, uh, we're going to get together, we're going to settle whatever this is that you're upset about. And uh, Wahlberg says to him, yeah, what do you want to get together? And that's when Danny Glover says, some place where I can see you coming from a long way off. Because he knows, and he's not wrong, he knows that uh, he picked the wrong guy to mess with when he picked Mark Wahlberg, who plays Bob Lee Swagger. And the place Colonel Johnson, Danny Glover, picks is a really bleak, blank part of icy, really, a really big, bleak part of icy, snow-covered mountains. Where, where is it? Who knows? But he picks a place and they all helicopter there in different ways. Well, Mark Wahlberg, remember Bob Lee Swagger, knows where they're going. And he sets it up. And he sets himself up. And he shows them what he can do with some of their re- their really bad people. And they had kidnapped Kate Mar- Mara, who's great in this too. And they, 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 oh, they did the worst things to her. And you know what? Mark Wahlberg is going to show them, well, he's going to put the fear of God into them. And folks, that big scene, whew, and the great Ned Beatty, you'll recognize him as soon as you see him. If you don't know him by that name, wow. He's one of the greatest actors we've ever made. And uh, he plays Senator Meacham. At any rate, the shooting and the way they they filmed it, it's, it really shows you again how, wow, this guy is the best in the world. And he gets all the bad guys, this one, that one, you can't even see him. And finally, you see, they, they, they notice that they're looking around and around and from 100 yards away, 200 yards away, Suddenly a lump of snow starts to stand up and it's Bob Lee. It's Bob Lee Swagger and he's all well dressed out in in a snow outfit that he could hide in. He got them all the way he does it and the way the scene moves. Folks, it's a magic movie moment. And if you haven't seen that movie, Shooter See it. You're going to feel the way I do. And you're going to see it. By now, it's one of those movies I've seen 30 times. And when I see it come on, I always watch it for all sorts of good reasons. And I I think you will, too. Start seeing that movie, Shooter. If you've never seen it, see it. And you'll be glad you did. And especially at this time of year, because... I don't know about you, but I hate Halloween. Well, that sounds like an an awful thing to say, but I've never gotten Halloween. I don't know about you. I've never gotten it. I never understood it. I never quite got the point of what we all do. As you know, all holidays we have start earlier and earlier every year. I think we, you know, start celebrating Christmas in July. And, uh, oh, wait a minute, that was a great Preston Sturgis movie, actually, (laughs) the great title, Christmas in July. But you know what I mean, that holidays start earlier, and I know that stores want to make money, and the companies that make these things and make the devil costumes and everything that kids buy today that their parents get for them, and spiders and and all these things that they they wear as, as costumes, well, I know they want to make money, but... 
I've never gotten that either. There's some neighbors uh, near us back home on the mainland, and they're, well, they're hanging giant spiders. I mean, giant eight feet in diameter for the spider body. And then the legs come out from the body, like eight legs they come out. They hang it on the, just coming off the roof, and it's uh, surrounded by fake webs, you know, that they can spray on. And I just drove past that the other day before coming out here to Milleronia that, that, you know, what are you doing? Stop it. What's wrong with you? Is anybody happy from that? Does anyone enjoy seeing that? Because I don't. If you do, folks, well, I, I guess that's, that's your business, but I don't get it. I don't get why we celebrate. I know I looked it up and you can look it up too. It's Halloween. Well, it's, you know, what, a thousand years now. And since, uh, of course, came out of Europe, came out of Ireland. In fact, uh, that it was an attached to then one of the popes attached it to All Saints Day, uh, which is the next night. So this is uh, the evening before All Saints Day, which was uh, became the Hallows, All Hallows Eve, the evening, which was, well, shortened into Hallow Evening or Halloween, and uh, E apostrophe E-N. And again, okay, okay. And they thought that especially on uh, when all saints would come out, that all, well, demons would come out too. And that if to, if, uh, to keep yourself safe from the demons, if you were leaving your house at night that night on Halloween, and uh, by the way, why would you? I mean, let's be honest, you know, exactly what do you know? We want a pizza. Okay, all right, you know, and... Guess who's going out to get the pizza? You. But, you know, they, that if you dressed up in costumes where you looked like uh, an angel or a, a bad guy and that you had horns on or something like that, that, oh, maybe the demons would leave you alone when you went out to get Chinese food or whatever you did. Uh, well, I that's okay, okay. It's another, all right, if you say so. But I, I I never got it then. I don't get it now, and I don't know why we're doing it. I remember liking it. I remember loving Halloween, in fact, when I was a kid, because I was talking about this with Colonel Jeff, that we never made... I didn't know anyone who got a costume. I don't even know if they had them a lot in those days, but no kid I knew ever had his mom take him out to the costume store and come back with, uh, you know, oh, look, it's Satan. You know, I don't, and I don't understand why that would be anyway. We, what we did was we would be heroes. It was always, you make them yourself in your house, whatever the costume was going to be. But it was always, well, Superman, Batman. And uh, for the little girls, it was a lot of uh, princess stuff. And I guess, uh, well, you, that sounds about right. And, uh, but whatever they did, whatever they... And we made them ourselves and looked forward to it. But they weren't that involved because, you know, where I grew up on, uh, on Long Island, uh, outside of New York, it was already wintertime. So getting around October 31st, you get pretty cold there. So, you know, whatever costume you made, you had your winter coat over it, and which is fine too. You can't walk around in a Superman shirt or something with the way you drew an S on it. But I remember one year being a Batman. I knew I wanted to be Batman. And I remember my mom took me to Lang's department store. It was a, not a big place. It was on Rockaway Avenue. And, uh, well, we could always get school clothes there like chinos and, uh, and shirts that, well, you button shirts and, and things like penny loafers or black lace shoes and a lot of sneakers. And and they also had, though, something I needed to be Batman. They had dark blue swim trunks. And I got a pair of those. I had that in my mind. That's what I got in my head together. That That's how to start to be Batman. You get the 
dark blue swim trunks on and over the gray uniform of the shirt and the gray tights, you know, and the Batman seal. But I didn't have any of those, and I didn't. I wasn't going to make those, but that's okay. And uh, so what you do is I remember I had a sweatshirt, and that was gray. So it's another one of those, close enough. You know, why not that? So I put the sweatshirt on. Plus, you didn't have Batman boots or, you know, like a, the big yellow belt with all the secret things in it where you, that you could throw at criminals. So I didn't have the, that either, but that's fine because we were happy kids. And so you could just wear, put on a pair of jeans and some sneakers and your winter coat. And then I was saying, Colonel Jeff remembered this too, we always had towels for the cape. The, every cape, Superman or Batman or whoever the, the guy was, the hero was, was one of your towels. And we didn't have exorbitant colors, you know, like uh, the Batman towel. There were no dark blue towels or the Superman towel. There was no red towels. So you just put on a towel, a white towel. And that was fine because, again, who cares? Not who cares. It was that was good enough. You really tried. And you were as happy as could be. And I remember also, by the way, every I remember uh, every boy always had uh, guns. They had cowboy outfits and uh, with the cap pistols in the holster and and a hat. You might have a cowboy hat. And every costume also could use a mask. That was one of the things we loved. You put on a mask. It was just a, a little plastic mask, like like a Lone, Lone Ranger mask. That you could get for fifty cents. It's one of the uh, what Walgreens or something, and uh, I loved it every year. I had a mask every year for two houses, and then I got to not liking it, and then I took it off. But two of the houses, we'd go out and we walked around the neighborhood, and that was that was great. We didn't have our parents with us, and well, everyone liked the neighborhood. And so you're just with your friends. There are five or six of you. And every house had five or six other folks and going around to them. And the streets were, well, we had kids walking around all over the place. And, uh, boy, so we were, we liked it. No decorations, no fancy costumes, just homemade junkola. That was terrific. And you were going out for candy. And I remember I always had... Uh, if uh, your mom went out and just to got, get something that she for clothes that she had, like to Lomans or Lord and Taylor or some you know some good stores like that, well, she kept the bag so they had a handle on them, and that was perfect for candy. Or as Colonel Jeff remembered, if you were really getting advanced and you were really thinking this through, you could use a pillowcase for the candy, and that was. Uh, that can hold that can hold a lot of candy, and but that's what you wanted. I never understood because that's what you want. You want a Snickers bar, and if that's what people are doing, if that's what the houses are doing, they're good houses. That's a good treat. And they would there was always one house that gave away apples. They they'd have apples, and they'd give you an apple. And even as kids, we wanted to say, boy, if you know what. We, if this was really trick or treat, we can give you a really bad trick. I don't want an apple, okay? Every kid, every kid who went around trick or treating has apples. Their mothers all bought apples. Every house had apples. Don't need you to give me an apple and say what? You need to be eating healthier on Halloween, you big dope. Oh boy, I'll tell you what, that, that would have been. They would have, for trick or treat, they, they would have gotten a trick, that not a trick like, oh, and then the kids put toilet paper all around the house. No, this is a burn the house down trick for giving out apples. Colonel Jeff, remember that one house gave out toothbrushes. They'd give you a toothbrush. That was the treat for the whole thing. Now, at that point, what, what do you do? You look at them, they look at you. Remember Seinfeld had a bit in his act where they'd, 
the uh, one of the parents at the house would always look down and say, what are you supposed to be? And he'd always say, I'm supposed to be home by seven, okay? So let's just throw the candy and let me get out of here. And uh, But you know what? We loved it. Don't give away apples. Don't do stupid things like that. I'm sorry, folks. You know what? If you're doing that, stop it. What you do is get a bag with a thousand Snickers bars in it, okay? And then you've just, you've done your job. The kids are happy. Everyone's happy. It's Halloween for crying out loud. And uh, yeah, you get bazooka gum too if you want to throw in something crazy. But don't. don't that's it. You're 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 done with everything else there. No toothbrushes, for goodness sake. And by the way, I remember when we got older, we, and I mean, because after a certain point with Halloween, you're not going around trick-or-treating, you know, with a mask and a bag when you're 15. You know, that's, uh, you've got a serious problem there. But I mean, I, then at one point on Halloween one year, we went around, my friends and I, we got into someone's car. Someone had a license and borrowed his parents' car. It was a four-door car, hard top, so you could roll all the windows down on both sides. And we would get eggs at the local dairy barn. Not Dairy Queen. There was a dairy barn, and it was a drive-up window as well. Now, here's you got six guys in a four-door car with the windows rolled down, driving up to the window. And we'd always think we had to pad the order to make us look, you know, harmless. And we'd always say, so the guy driving, the guy driving, was a kid. So the kid driving would say, uh, yes, ma'am, could I please have, uh, may I please have uh, a quart of milk and a loaf of bread and 52 dozen eggs? Yes, 52 dozen, please. And uh, no, you know what? We'll take that all in the back seat. Thank you. If you don't mind, uh, we'll just pile it in the car here. And, of course, they knew what was going on. But we would go, well, egging on Halloween. And you're looking for other kids in their parents' cars doing the same thing. You could really have a pretty good egg war. And I'll never forget that one night we were, well, we'd been doing pretty well. And we didn't have, uh, we just tossed, of course, the milk and the bread on the floor but we we had those uh those eggs every guy had a dozen eggs until he ran out and then it was like uh, a world war ii movie more ammo we're short we're dry on ammo and they'd get more uh, uh, you know dozens uh, of eggs passed around in their cases and in the cartons and i remember we pu- we pulled up to a traffic light and looked over and someone said hey Look, it's Richie McLean. And uh, he was a good friend of ours. And uh, he's a great guy, great athlete, and still is. And uh, as soon as that kid said, hey, look, it's Richie McLean. We let loose with everyone. All six guys throwing eggs at that car. And plastered that car. With a bunch of eggs, five or six eggs a piece, and that kid said, "Hey, there's Richie McLean." And then after all the eggs, he said, "And his father." And we all there was a pause. We all looked at this this idiot and said, "You couldn't say that first. What are you a moron?" And we all instantly got out of the car and took our jackets off and our shirts off and everything to try with our shirts to wipe the 500 eggs off that we had thrown. But I remember Richie was, he's a great guy anyway, and he was uh, in the uh, passenger seat, in the front seat there, and he was kind of smiling, you know. He he knew what it was. And uh, his dad is a great guy, Ed McLean, boy, who was a real war hero from World War II. He's a fighter pilot. And uh, even Ed, though, and he was always involved in committees of stuff. He ran for mayor once there, and he's a great guy. He's a good family. And uh, but even he just sat there 
you know, with his hands on the wheel, and he had kind of a half smile on his face, too. Well, he'd been through it all, and so he didn't mind too much that six of Richie's idiot friends would, was, were egging his car. And we did that after we used our shirts to wipe off as many of the blah eggs as we could. We got uh, back in the car. There are no big goodbyes to that, okay? Oh, I see you tomorrow. You know, there's, there's, there's just, oh, okay. We got back into our car. The light turned green, and we all took off, and they went home, and we went, well, to get more eggs. <laughs> but you know what, folks? If you like Halloween, I'm okay with that. I I liked it as a kid. I liked it a lot. I don't like it now, because I don't know why it has to be so evil. I think kids should dress more like, make their own costumes. You don't have to spend... 20 or 40 or 80 bucks on something at the costume store and to do what to be an evil witch or something like that no you know what make your own get a pair of swim trunks and be batman or be a princess i know that but we know the same things don't we homer is homer and pluto is a planet so remember folks as always if you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to and a home to come back to and someone there who cares about you, folks, the game's over and you've won. And that's the smartest thing I've ever known. Holiday or not, be well and we'll see you here next time.